hopefully just making a little test for right now five minutes to go so I'm just trying out see if uh, everyone can hear me and see me Let me see if you, uh, yeah, let me know if you can hear me. I don't see any comments yet, so I don't know. Okay, cool. Uh, maybe someone can write a comment. Let's see if it works. Just want to see if it, I can see those comments coming in or not before we kick off. Oh, awesome. Great. Thanks, Joy. You can hear me fine. That's great. I saw that comment. Right on. Cool. All right. I'll slowly get people in. I'm just going to talk crap for uh, in between. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. And um, so we'll wait for people to come in. Uh, it's going to be fun. I'm going to be uh, talking about uh, composition and arrangement taking some questions answer and all that so hey Dave hey Antoine yeah I saw you I saw you now cool that works seems to work so there's like 17 viewers 18 now awesome cool in the meantime before we start I uh, just want to talk a little bit um, I just played the concert in um, in uh, Quebec and then like a far place in Quebec in Rouen Oranda for the Festival des Guitares du Monde, d'Abitibi Témiscamingue. <laughs> Such a crazy name. <laughs> um, and that was fun. That was a lot of fun. The second time I was there uh, after 14 years. I played there once, like 14 years ago. And it was also uh, fun to uh, play a concert in front of real people. Um, that was actually uh, uh, pretty interesting to play after a year and almost two years without concert. <laughs> So, my uh, my last uh, my last concert before that was um, at Nam 2020. So that's been a while. So I was, I was a little nervous and all that, but you know, <laughs> that was like uh, ooh, <laughs> far away. <laughs> Had to practice my uh, repertoire quite a bit, and but it was fun. That went all right. So I was happy. And now uh, today, yeah, we're gonna wait still a few minutes before we're on time. And I uh, hope uh, you guys are doing great out there. Crazy times. Hope you guys are fine. I'm really happy to be here today for Tone with Amp as well. It's cool. Cool that they have me here today. So, by the way, if you have any questions about anything, don't, don't hesitate to ask and put it in the comments. I'll try to grab as many questions as I, as I can, you know. So I'm going to... I'm gonna kick off by playing a song and then we're gonna talk about it and um, take some questions. We're gonna talk about arrangement also, maybe about recording if it, you guys are interested in that. I can maybe uh, tell you a little bit about uh, how I record, what are my you know, pointers to help you uh, in the recording if you plan on recording yourself your guitar and what you can try and have fun with. Maybe we can discuss about that too. Cool, so I'm glad that it works. We'll wait still a few minutes and then we'll kick off. And is, is it laggy? Is it fine? Is it like smooth? If you guys can let me know and then uh, after that I think we'll be ready to go. If everything seems uh, fluid. Hopefully it is. Uh, it's my first time actually uh, using Facebook for a live stream. Oh, thanks Joy again. All good. Perfect, you guys. Thanks. So, 
I'm not just, you know, alone. Uh, you can see that you guys are hearing me. <laughs> That's crazy. Being online like this, it's so weird. I have feedback of people and like 30 seconds later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. No lag. Hello from Montana. Hello, Dustin. Nice to see you. Well, to meet you. <laughs> cool. Right on. Yeah, I can actually... Yeah, I can make some lights and stuff. Cool. I haven't done that in a while. Cool. All right. All right, let's start it up then. It's seven, so let's go here in Easter time. I don't know if you have... Um, I see that some people from Montana. If you want, you write, please write where... St. Louis, nice. Uh, it's fun to see where you guys are from and listening from. Uh, that's pretty cool. Right on. <laughs> cool. So, I'm very happy. Let's let's start. I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I'm not really doing a lot of stuff online, so thanks for being here today. Uh, and uh, thanks for uh, Tone with them to have me here on this invitation. And so, I'm going to, you know be playing the tone with amp so what you're gonna hear today um, is just this microphone right here and uh, my guitar and the tone with amp will create those effects so that you can hear like here I'm, I'm using mostly a delay and reverb that's kind of what I like to have there right on so uh, I'm gonna start with a song and uh, we're gonna talk about how I write my uh, how I do my arrangement, how I come up with my ideas most of the time, and uh, so you guys can try it out for yourself and uh, experiment with, with you know maybe my method of doing it. I mean um, I've developed that method over time, and you know when you start writing, sometimes you're in out of the blue, you don't really know what you're go gonna do, and um, it's it's fun to have cer certain uh, maybe certain exercises to do or certain. Uh, practice you know to bring inspiration and uh to uh to make happen to make something happen you know so in any case so i'm gonna use this this song i'm gonna play which is called song for steven and uh this is a song i wrote for my uh one of my favorite guitar players out there is a uh, great inspiration to me uh, i love his music he writes the most beautiful melodies ever uh his name is steven bennett and um uh, so that's a song for him, and um, also it's inspired, of course, by his music, but it's inspired also by the music of the police and Sting. So you might hear some little things here from uh, here and there from uh, Sting and the police, and that's something that we're gonna discuss as well. And uh, how I, uh, you know, I kind of uh, use that as an inspiration source as well. So, all right, let's start. Song for Steven.
All right, there you have it. <laughs> Song for Steven. Right on. Cool. So um, I'd like to uh, to talk a little bit about this song and how I wrote it because I think it's a very uh, a good example of how I I uh, work most of the time. So um, by uh, maybe um, we'll we'll start uh, directly from a, a standard tuning and um, we'll go from there. So. <laughs> It's not in standard tuning, but I just want to show you how I came up with it. So, uh, basically, um, some people, I mean, there's nothing wrong and nothing good, I guess, in, in the way you, you're going to write. You know, it's, there's no, like, uh, what I mean is there's nothing necessarily a wrong or, you know, a wrong way to do it. Uh, as soon as the result is good, that's all that really matters. So the process is, is really your own. But uh, for me, uh, how I, you know, I used to just you know, jam around and find some stuff and you know, work on it and eventually be kind of happy with it. But um, I'd say that um, most of the time, uh, what I like to do is to, s to start with some riffs or some chords or some ideas like that. Um, some people that can start with a melody right away are really good. I, I, I would love to be able to do that actually. Um, most people that uh, write great melodies start with the melody because the melody is the most important thing in your song. So uh, that's uh, clear, <laughs> yeah, clear influence by Sting and the Police, of course. And we'll go on to talk about that. Uh, just yeah. Um, so um, by uh, by starting and uh, you know finding some some vamp or some kind of riff, that's that's kind of what I like to do first, just to give me like a background thing to jam on or to sing on top of, and find some inspiration and in being able to write a melody afterwards. But some people like if you can write a melody right from the, the top of your head, and that's the first thing I I congratulate you because I think that's, that's the best thing you can do. But uh, for me, it's rarely what happens. So uh, sometimes, like we're gonna see here, but uh, the first thing I do, it could, it could start, I could sometimes start in standard tuning, just simply, as simple as standard tuning, and find like a, you know, just using like a open first position chords and stuff. Uh, and also I could sometimes start from an open tuning that's kind of crazy and gives me some cool intervals to play with and is inspiring in itself. So that's another possibility. So the starting point is, it, it, it could change, I mean, but after that, the, everything else after that start is pretty much the same process for me. But uh, it could be either a standard tuning or an open tuning and then the rest will be the same as I'm gonna explain. Um, like for here, I, I I was actually when I, I wrote this song, I was camping. I was on the holiday. It was I think in 2007. It's kind of, kind of a while ago. Um, I was camping. I remember that. And um, um, so I had my guitar. I was jamming, you know, just chords. Um, and I finally got like a chord sequence like this. And you know, by grooving and jamming around, I found like this kind of rhythm to it. And uh, I'm gonna talk about the chords a little bit after, but the chords goes like this. Okay, very simple, like open chords, like D minor, C, F, C, B flat major, A minor, C, and again. So that's that's a very simple chord sequence. Anybody I think can you know jam with a guitar and find something like that. Find some cool cool grooves, maybe maybe a strumming pattern even. I'm not that doesn't mean I'm gonna use a strumming pattern in my composition. It's just a way to create something. And what I like to do is to play that for a long time until it's like stuck in my mind. That could be a one way to do it. And I'll sing, and then sometimes it just works with what I've been doing. But if if not, if I need to work a little more, sometimes I'll um, I'll record it. I, I might record a chord sequence on um, just uh, you know on your phone or something, and have it play back and and uh, you know jam around. Or if I'm home, I could maybe record a loop or something, and just you know let let it go and then sing to it or jam to it, and you know find other things or find some ideas out of it. But as a beginning, it's just like standard tuning here, simple chord sequence. So maybe what I, I'd like to do next is finding a cool bass line. If, because I, I've, I try to think about uh, composing as a full band. 
if I was a full band, what I would do, if I was a bass player, what I would like to play on this chord sequence. If I was uh, then a keyboard player, or what chords, or if I was like a drummer, what beat, or if I was a, a singer, what would be my melody? So I try to, to imagine all these roles within the band and fill them up. So what I have here is like these chords, you know, again, maybe once more. So maybe if I was a bass player, I would play. Okay. So it's kind of already some movement to it, you know, between the chords. And I have my bass, I already have the drums a little bit in there with the second and fourth beat uh, accent there all the time, like a snare drum. So I would say kind of my rhythm section is is pretty much done already. So by, you know, jamming over the chords, maybe it's kind of, a, you know, a little bit of movement, a little bit, a little bit of, uh, you know, just already a kind of almost a melody of a bass player, you know. So I kind of try to get already a, um, a line or something that's musical in the bass. I, I kind of, um, I don't know, I like bass players. <laughs> I love, uh, it's one of my favorite things in the band, actually. So um, that's why I, I spend quite a bit of time sometimes to, to, uh, defin to, to define a good found foundation uh, of a song, you know, a good bass or a groove or... So I might spend quite a bit of time before I get there. You know, it does, didn't came out like in two seconds, but eventually I jam something. You know, like, oh, that's kind of cool. I like this bass line. And so once I'm happy with that, uh, now uh, I'm gonna start maybe writing a little more or singing a little more. So um, if I can record, then I will record maybe th what I have here. Maybe a if I have a multi multi track at home, I could record a few things. Maybe a chord, the chords I was playing, the bass line I was playing. And then maybe I could sing to, to that, let it play, and then just sing, sing a melody, sing stuff. Um, I was camping, so I didn't have any means with me. I had the paper, so I, I made like a tablature and I wrote my bass line and the drum, you know, the, the, the two and four beats. So I wrote that on the tablature for now in standard tuning. And I started like, uh, okay, make just this quick arrangement of this riff, just so I have a visual of where my bass is, my drum is, and then I'll try to sing to that, you know, and then eventually, if I find a melody that's cool, I'm gonna try to st start arranging it on paper. And then that's the more, I mean, it's the hardest part. Maybe it's to get there, to get to more like a, you know, an arrangement level of working on paper. Um, but since just before going into the melody part, I have this, um, I had this, uh, I mean, I'm in standard tuning and the song is in D minor. So the, the, the B string here is not in the key. So uh, just want to make sure you guys still hear me. All that seems all right. Um, le, um, so the B string is kind of a, a bummer because it's not in the key. I would have, I would need like a, a B flat maybe to be in the key of D minor, but it's it's terrible sounding. So if I put a B flat there, I don't think I want that. You know, <laughs> it could be. Uh, I could maybe switch this string to an A. it would be in the key it would work that could have been a possibility but for some reason uh, when I started working on a melody I eventually start decided to go up a, a semitone here you know and get like a C here so, so I have a major chord here on my top three strings and my chords are not that far from where they were right the minor instead of this is now like that C, it could be just two fingers. The F, I could leave it open. So it's major seven, that's kind of cool. C and the B flat, you like that. A minor. Okay, so um, that's not that far, right? So that works. I could uh, start maybe arranging. I mean, what what I'm trying to do here is mostly finding something that will help my my fingerings are my my arrangement like the tuning is a mean to achieve my ideas so in this case i started in standard oh there was something i could change to make it easier and more you know useful because the open strings are my best friends i mean i love you know the <laughs> open strings because uh, i can play them with one hand you know you don't need you 
you, need, you don't need the two hands together. So that's really like a real estate saving. Um, but you're gonna need all all you can because it's gonna you know the more you're gonna add to your composition. I mean you n you need to <laughs> make it possible. And that's that's the most challenging thing is to be able to play what you're you're thinking afterwards, and that's always a trouble. <laughs> I, get, I get always like in trouble with that. <laughs> um, so, anyways, um, by jamming, I found this melody came came to me. So that's a simple melody. It's it's, and then after writing it, that's where I thought I, I started to notice it sounds like Sting. It sounds like a melody by Sting or something. I actually came up with it with just singing stuff. You know, I was probably playing my chords, and I was like, so I would jam my, my melody with my voice, and then okay, what is it? And then change the tuning to a C here because it's easier. I'm gonna be able to use the C note here. And then, okay, let's write it on top of my, my tablature. So I have my tablature with my bass line written already with the rhythm. And then I will uh, arrange, you know, ta, ta, da, 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 da. okay, so I'll find the, the rhythm, write it down on top of my bass line, and then start, like, you know, reading it, and then, ta, you know, try to learn it, like if it was somebody else's tune, because I've put two parts together, and, and uh, I need to really take some time to figure out how it works. I mean, I, I'm not like this kind of guy who can actually come with all this and jam it and put it all together on the instrument. I really need to write it down for me. I need to see it, see what note of the melody is going with what note of the bass and all that and construct it that way. So anyways, I had this kind of melody by that reminded me of Sting. I was not aware necessarily what, what, what was the actual um, tune afterwards. I, I, I think it is pretty close to... Uh, uh, an Englishman in New York, so <laughs> kind of same same kind of melody. And uh, one note about that melody again. I'll play it again. It's kind of a question here, and then the answer to that is very simple. It's the same thing without a, a note, with less less a note. Okay, so I've It's kind of suspended and then dun, da, 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 da. answer. So this is also something I'm gonna use a lot: questions and answer. So I'm trying to get like a melody that asks a question and then uh, answers, uh, you know, an answer to that. So once I got like my rough tuning, I mean, change one string, it seems to work. I'm gonna. I, I wrote my bass line, my percussive hits. I wrote my melody. Maybe I had to change to work on the, the mm -hmm. you know by trying it on the guitar I might have changed like some fingerings and maybe I would have changed the tuning you know if I would have found like a better one to do it easier easier, but for now it worked so I did um, you know after writing it and jamming it eventually I added like some some in between stuff like your you know that like that icing on the cake or uh, the spices you know that you can add on something just uh, to enhance the. The, the, the performance with my own playing here. So I added like some of the rhythm things in the middle. So at the end of the day, I get this section done like this. Right? So I added all the rest of the chords, the grooves and all that. Once I'm happy with that, I got like a first section. I worked on it, you know, a lot of time, a lot of work. And once I'm happy, then I, you know, I work it enough and I like it, then cool, I might move on to something else. Um, I put it aside for a while. I mean, sometimes just putting aside an idea for for some time is good. So sometimes I work like that, I, if I, especially if I'm stuck. If I wrote the riff, I like it, and I don't. I'm trying to force to other things, and it doesn't come right away. I will just put it aside and record maybe a video of me playing it. Put it aside. Put it in a folder somewhere with like a temporary name, just so I can find it back and go back in there and eventually listen to some ideas, older ideas, and come back and say, "Oh, that was good," or "That was crap." Let's drop that. Or "That was good." Oh yeah, what was it? And then I pick it back, pick it back, and then oh okay, maybe with this new. Um, you know, with the distance and the time, you you find some new ideas, find some new uh, 
new things that you could add to that. You know, sometimes that's how I work. I like to um, to do that so I can work on a totally different idea on one day and another idea another day, and then eventually come back to those. You know, it's just like ta time, time, and and um, I mean distance seems to sometimes help, especially if you're stuck. So don't. Sometimes I don't try to force too much. I I try when I when I feel it, but sometimes if it doesn't go anywhere, I just like add whatever I thought to that and leave it aside for a while. Listen to some music. Some uh, maybe I'll listen to some influences and then I have some ideas. You know that comes to me. Anyways, so that's uh, that's how I wrote like a first part. Maybe the second part of this song came out a little differently. This one came out with the melody first. Um, I had like this question. Uh, that actually, you know what? I I came up with this idea uh, again at the same same day. Th this day I was camping, and so I had to go to the toilet. You know, and the toilets and camping sites are not like close. You have to walk a little bit. So I took this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, to sing along, and so I, I had this melody now coming ca coming to me. You know, uh, as I was walking to the bathroom, like. So now you know why I'm not I'm not a singer. Um, so, anyways, <laughs> hope you guys are still there and I don't see any new comments. Oh, okay, good, good, got you. Twelve is the best place to get. Yeah, it is. Uh, yes, Alan, I know. <laughs> so that's a question right there. It sounds like a question. So I had this, and then I had the first answer. So I had question, answer, so question one, answer one. Question one, uh, question. So answer uh, one f uh, first way. So, but now it's like, okay, let's try, uh, let's ask another question. Well, it's the same question because it didn't understand the first time the, the answer. So I guess I, get, I, get, I have to find a new way to answer it. So now. But this this is actually not a new a very new uh, idea. What I did there is using an, uh, the same idea and I just harmonized it like um, a, you know a third higher just to create a, a new line. But it's the same line. It's like sorry, it's the same thing but a third higher. Okay, so that's not by creating a totally new thing. It's just I use what I had. And I changed it up a little bit. I could have done something else, but it's sometimes it's not the amount of ideas that you get, then just like finding a c couple ones and then, you know, play around with them a little more and go, go deeper in this idea and, or just give it a new way of saying another thing. But it, you don't have to entirely create like so many things sometimes. Um, so that's, that's already like, you know, the question and uh, the answer number two was the same kind of the answer number one. But a third higher, and then repeat the question a third time. So didn't uh, understand yet again. So well, I'll, I'll I'll just you know reply the first answer again. Uh, maybe you will understand this time. Okay, but the fourth time. Okay, I'm done with that. So so I decided to close it there. You know, it's like. All right, and then move on to something else. So that sec this section is based on the melody first because probably had this first section that I had built that was there. So I had some more inspiration maybe for a melody now first. Uh, but, but like I said earlier, it's it's rarely the case. No, most of the time when I, I get more of a, um, you know, the chords or something, a riff before that I get a melody. But anyways, in this case, because I had something before, maybe that's why it came to me, like a melody first. And so what I have done to arrange this part, it's I use the melody again. I wrote it. Um, some people, uh, what I like to do most of the time is using um, uh, Guitar Pro. So if I use Guitar Pro, I can write like sometimes the part and have them play for me, so I can hear if they sound all right. 
If not, if I'm just having a paper, I will write it down on paper again, this, but backwards. So I had like the melody written with the rhythm and then I'll add like an arrangement. So I'll find the chords. So I found the chords were like B flat. And here what I've done is I'm using a rhythmic cell. So I'm using the same rhythm, same riff on each chord. Just that rhythm. What are the effects I'm using? Yes, I'm using the effects of the tone with amp right here. And uh, by the way, it's uh, delay and reverb. So, yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, right through the guitar. Okay, so, so now I've got melody here. I've got my... Okay, and my rhythm. So maybe I'll build... After that, you know, I've got my bass, my melody here, and I have some space in the middle, so maybe I can just fill up the chords in the middle. So that, that's how I came up with the chords. And all that. And then A7, and then a D minor 7. Which kind of the melody kind of creates the chord in this part. C. I get is this section. All right, so I've got like a now I've got an A. got a B and um, if I want to connect the two it worked really well one into the other so I don't I, I didn't feel the need to add like a middle a pre-chorus section if you will or something there I did that after to come back I could have probably come back directly but I decided to go in this like little instrumental part which is kind of a ripoff of a oops wrong tuning <laughs> sorry <laughs> Right, that's right. So I took that and uh, kind of changed the order of chords, but used the same kind of idea, right? Those one, five, and nine chords, like the one, five, and the fifth of the fifth, like, right? And then I did the B flat, the G, and the C. So I went kind of backward here. I went this. Kind of, I inverted those two chords, right, <laughs> and kind of changed the rhythm. So, but you can see because I said, well, why not? This sounds like a little bit like Sting, so why not putting one more of that? You know, put more, more of that, more of that. <laughs> so I've got this, uh, you know, message in the bottle section. So. So kind of, you know, using some inspirations and some uh, hammering on a little more on those those uh, little things that you can find, you know, sometimes or, or find yourself doing without necessarily thinking about it. But, you, you know, you found yourself like, oh, it sounds like something I heard already. What is it? And I try to I really try to actually put more of that when I can, because I want to do it intentionally, you know, and uh, if it's int intentionally, I think it's, it's fun. It's just fun. So. Um, so I keep that in mind and I'll, I will use again another the police type of thing later on in the arrangement. Um, and so now I've got like the A section and they were going really well into the, uh, the other because I guess that why, maybe why, why it, you know, they connected well is because they don't start on the same chord. So here my A section starts on a D. But my B section starts on a B flat, so they're really different sounding right right from the bat. So if if my B section was started on a D again, uh, like first section, it would be a little too similar. There would not be like a, such of a, um, a a clean cut transition between the two sections. So I feel when that happens, if I have an A and a B that are very starting kind of alike or on the same chord, I kind of what I like the most doing is adding a part in the middle to oh, to kind of forget about 
the A and the B, the, the D minor mm. chord, for example, that first chord, just so we turn around something else and forget and then bring the listener back into maybe that chorus coming up and then bring that 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 section it would work okay so uh it's sometimes something i need to do sometimes i feel not necessarily it's not necessary to do it so it depends really on what what the ideas are and um mm. but it's just something to keep in mind that might help you if you feel like uh, sometimes oh i have my a section my b section and they seem t very alike when you start one into the other maybe it's because you need a little something to get kind of out of there and forget about those a and b sections and a very quick thing that just builds on to c to kind of drive the listeners into the next section easier or better so anyway so i had like you know you have many sections in the song but just want to talk maybe about the end of the song um i've got like this after the the last transition i go uh, into kind of a reggae part the police does this is a reggae band okay so what I've done here is using the same melody okay I still have my A section melody, but now I arranged it as a reggae, so I said, why not? I'm going to put that, again, some more influence of the police. I'm going to rearrange that section as a reggae, how it would be. But then reggae is pretty simple. You can have like this, this bass on the beats, and I always like to have... So I'll always have those kind of chords on the upbeats, right? So... Um, I use like the same chords, same melody, but I rearrange it in a different style and made the outro outro like that. So just to put a little more of the police in there and to have more fun, you know. So that's you know that's um, that's pretty much uh, really quickly how I I write songs, how I come with ideas, how I arrange them. Um, uh, any questions about any of that? She's music in this jam. Maybe, yeah, of course, maybe. It's, <laughs> it's very possible, Dustin. Hey. <laughs> uh, you guys have questions about how I, about writing or arranging or anything, anything else? Maybe I can talk a little bit more about something else uh, also, uh, about uh, recording, taking other questions or tunings. Um, uh, maybe what I do sometimes, uh, write it down, your questions, I'll try to catch them up. Um, when you, um, uh, when I write, um, 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 I was about to say, uh, sometimes if, if it could be started from uh, an open tuning, and sometimes people ask about, uh, well, how do you find your tunings, or what's, how do you, how do you decide of a tuning before writing a song, you know, that's, it's kind of weird when you think about it. It's tough to make that decision when you don't know where you're going, right? It's it's tough to make like you need this tool, these tools, and then to make this thing before you make it. So uh, it's sometimes uh, <laughs> it's tough. So when you're in out of the blue and you you don't know, sometimes I like to use an open tuning just to give me ideas, just to jam around, find some cool ideas, find some new things or cool intervals or possibilities. And then eventually, you know, um, I might do the same process, write a riff, write a melody. If I find like I need to re-adjust re the string because, oh, I have got this new idea here and this idea would be really much easier if I had this string open or this string open, you know. So that I might change it then. Okay, I see some uh, a question here. How do you find chords for the open tuning adjustments? I guess you mean like uh, if I really take my time and finding chords. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not a guy who will like uh, build an open tuning and find all my guitar scales like major minor scales and all my chords I will go by ear really I'll just go and find some cool stuff I mean it's it's challenging because sometimes you're out of the blue you don't know where to put your fingers anymore and that's a great thing because um, for me I don't I, I don't really like guitar so much <laughs> I know that's shocking but uh, 
that that's kind of cool because it it makes you forget about what you do all the time so you can't like repeat i mean it helps to not repeat yourself so much i feel that by using different tunings um and remind also remember that when you use open tunings one thing that can happen is you can be trapped in a certain key or color that's really strong so uh it's very suggest suggestive of a uh, key and then it's hard to sometimes modulate get out of it and if you write many songs in the same tuning they will kind of tend to sound alike so if you do that too much that's it's going to be redundant so um people like most guitar players that uses open tuning they will have to do a, a one tuning per song or something but uh, to go back to maybe your open tuning chords adjustment um, i'm just going to show you an example of another tuning that i've been um, uh, that I used for uh, writing a song or two, and uh, this is um, a tuning for Ashes in the Sea. Uh, sure, um, sure, Tori, nice. Uh, like for example, if you like a chord, uh, let's say I, I I started with this chord called a D minor ninth. D minor nine is made of of D F A D F A C E. You have those five notes to, to, to be to make possible on your uh, six, six strings, unless you use a different guitar. But uh, so that's that's definitely if you have five five notes, six strings, you, there's one of them that's gonna double. But y what you can do, start doing, is just write a bunch of possibilities. <laughs> D minor nine is the best. <laughs> yes, Kirsten. Um, so yeah, and 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 I maybe I've I've came up with when I wrote this uh, this song called Ashes in the Sea, um, I I um, I used uh, I wrote down a bunch of tunings like um, I don't know if, uh, you, maybe ten may, maybe nine or ten possibilities of doing it with the within the range of the strings that is possible without breaking or being too loose. So I mean you can I mean I could spend time like to writing down a few, but I I'm sure you can do that. But I, I I've done. I've done a few possibilities, and what I liked to do is just uh, try them out with the guitar. And eventually, I found like one or two that were like, "Oh crap, that's awesome!" <laughs> I love the sound of it. For some reason, the intervals, the way you know the the intervals between the strings created a certain chord that is a voicing that's very very interesting, and that got me inspired right away. So uh, that's sometimes a starting point that could happen. So for now. Mm -hmm. I'm back in. Uh, by the way, I was uh, I was in standard like um, in, in uh, song for Steven was E A D G C E. So that was standard with a C here. Now um, this this D minor nine tuning will be D D A, and then the D here I decided to go up to an E. So I have here one from the degrees of my D minor chord. One, five, nine. And then here, the G, I decided to go down a whole step to a F. And the C, stayed like now in C, so the second string is a C. first string stayed to E. So what I have here is D, A, E, F, C, E. It's just like deep and enigmatic and dark. Like makes you think. It makes you like right away into a mood and an introversion or something. Um, because what I think it is, is most of the chords that have a semitone in the middle of the voicing always sounds good. So that's why you have here a, F, a E and an F together. So that's an example of, of uh, a song that started with tuning instead, but the rest was pretty much the same. I had this riff coming up to me by jamming a little bit. here so I based a lot of the the song on on this riff 
and then uh, added the melody, um, completed those chords and all that. This is kind of the same way that I've explained for the song of for Steven. So uh, maybe I'm gonna play it. Maybe I'm gonna wait a little bit. Do you guys have any questions about anything else before I I will play that? And I guess I'll let you go soon. But uh, maybe find that, let me find that speed. I was not okay. Mm. Lower, is that possible? What? Yeah, that's gonna work. Here, um, I'm using the speed number 14 <laughs> on the tone with them. Would you, uh, that would have taken me 10 minutes. <laughs> Hey Gilles, salut! Salut mon oncle, comment ça va? <laughs> It's my uncle right there. Uh, this is one of my favorite. Oh, cool, thanks, Kristen. Nice. Oh man, thank you. Thank you. All right, so man, you guys have any questions about anything? Or I should just play, play this song? And I'll let you go soon. I mean, another five minutes or something, and we can maybe talk a little more after, and then uh, we'll be all right. It was a lot of fun, actually. I hope uh, you guys enjoy it and find something interesting. If you, uh, any of you are uh, using, a, uh, have questions on recording as well, I can talk a little bit about that. And although I know it's like a very long and crazy topic, we can spend time on that a lot. But let me play maybe a song or two. We'll see. Let's play "Hashes in the Sea."
There it is, ashes in the sea. Uh, <laughs> what a kind of uh, do, 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 do. whoops, uh, what a kind of uh, you subscribe my time with microphones. Yes, I'll do. Um, oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Michael. Uh, uh, Denis, why is she accorded? Accorded on open tuning. Yes, I'm, at, I'm tuned in. Um, let me write it down here if I reply to you. Can I do that? Uh, it's D A E F G. Uh, no, F G A E F C E. That's it. Yeah. I don't know if it worked. Did it worked. Yeah. Okay. That worked. Ah, thank you. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, <coughs> yeah, the micro. Okay, Greg is asking. Uh, can you describe what type of microphones you use and placement? Um, mostly for recording. I mean, it's a little different than what I have. Your ear, norm, uh, ear is just that one mic for the live stream. But normally, I don't know if you see on the on the side here. You can see it a little bit. I have another mic down here that you might not see. It's hard for me to show you, but um, I do a couple things. I mean, um, I have some small capsules and di also bigger diaphragm microphones like this or those two here and a small one in the middle there. Um, I sometimes use the two smalls together. Um, they're pointed mostly like, you know, maybe a, about a um, 12, uh, maybe a, a, f a little less than a foot, you know, towards the 12th fret, but pointed at like the end of the fretboard. That would be one of them here. And the, the other one could be uh, a little more like next to the, uh, the, the, the lower belt, but pointed like around the bridge. I don't want it too in front because it sounds kind of cardboardy. If you go too much like this, it's going to sound very bright and thin. So you kind of want it in front, but not directly in front like this, but more like at an angle. I like it this way. It's like, it's kind of cool. I like the sound like a very, if you want a wider type of sound, you can use that. That's a cool, cool one. I use the pickup as well. So I use, tr I could use three sources like that. Uh, the pickup and two mics left and right, full pan. Um, that's one way, or sometimes I use uh, the array, the, the, the ones that are in the middle here, uh, the small and the big, or the, the two big ones to do a middle side technique, which is a little more complex to talk about, but if you make some research, it's a, um, it's a middle side MS technique. So basically, uh, that would be, uh, th it's more pointed, it's more close, uh, I mean, in front of the guitar, but um, the mid one would be the same as the, the small one, so the same place, but the big one would be in pretty much in front of the sound hole, but it's in the eight shape pattern instead of, a, it's a figure eight instead of a cardioid, and it's sideways. And I use it horizontally. I don't know if you get that, but it's the eight pattern would be up and down instead of left and right. And um, I kind of put my, I'm, I'm recording like this, so you, you, I would, use this recording technique to kind of put it like very in the middle of the guitar and get like the both sides like this instead of like that. I don't know if you if it makes sense. A standard one would be like more left and right, take up and down. I feel it, it's more balanced in the middle for the low end. It's easier to get the middle side that's more centered. But that's uh, something I've been experimenting with. Uh, it's a little more complex. It's mid side you have to do certain things with phase and stuff and it's complex to talk about here. But um, uh, that's the, if you make some research, you'll understand how it works. But that's mostly what I do, you know, one or the other. Here I'm, I have four mics. I have uh, four mics so I can use the two placements or different, different pairing. So I'm already uh, ready for doing a couple of options right away. So that's easy. If I want to record, it's already ready. I can choose, oh, I like this combination for this or this or that. But uh, this is a Lauten Audio uh, FC357. Uh, that's a, a multi-pattern mic, nice mic. I have a, the pair of small mics or tube mics. Those are made by Charter Oak, and they are M900T. Um, and I have another Charter Oak, which is this big one, which is in figure eight right now, and it's um, E700. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. I go into, uh, I have an Apple OX8 and um, by UAD for my interface and I uh, use uh, mostly the Neve preamps uh, in there so that gives you an idea of what I do most of the time 
All right, Denis, j'en ai une tombe. C'est surprenant, mais je trouve que ça beau. Ah oui, yeah, battery, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think um, they might be interested in getting, like, I think they're, they're doing uh, different batteries now, uh, Denis. Yeah. The, uh, for, uh, for maybe uh, the tone with them, uh, uh, common people, I think it's Dave. Uh, Danny here, Osborne, is asking about like uh, the batteries. If you have options for batteries, if you want. Um, cool. Any other? Qu Let me see. I'll go back a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. You have to tell me how it's. How does it feel to be awesome, Dustin? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, yep. Cool. All right. Any other questions? I think I'm going to close uh, with uh, playing another tune for you guys. Um, let me play. Cool. You got an answer here, uh, Denis. So, all right. Let me tune a little bit and then I'll play the last one for you. And it's going to be called, um, it's called Spiritual Groove. Hope you enjoyed that. I had a lot of fun. I hope to uh, meet you on the road eventually. We'll see. And uh, if not, then uh, for a while we'll see uh, you online eventually too. I'll try to get my uh, <laughs> my uh, streaming game a little more, I guess. But, oh, it's tough. <laughs> but that's a good one right there. It was good to do it today. I'm really happy that... Uh, Tony with them um, got me this spot here. So thank you guys very much. Check it, check them out. Very cool uh, guitar effects that are, you know, playing through the guitar body, which is kind of weird when you listen to it the first time. It's like, where does that come from? It's weird. It's fun. And by the way, if you're looking into um, my albums, you can find. Uh, Uh, my last album that I, I, um, I put out uh, almost a year ago, uh, Reflect. Check it out on my uh, on my um, website. My website is AntoineDufourMusic.com. You can order anything there, pretty much. You can also go on CandyRat.com uh, if you go there. You all, there's also my albums there. Some more separate tabs if you want to choose different tabs. I do sell my tabs also on my website as bu bundles, so you can check it out. I do have t-shirts like this one there. Um, I have some bandanas also that I have the black ones back in the, uh, I have in uh, stock. So uh, you guys, uh, you know, just check out my website, order that. It'll be, uh, it'll be fun. So, all right. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you guys. Thanks, Alain. Here's spiritual groove for you, and then I'll see you next time. Cheers.
All right. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Hope you enjoyed it I, as I did. And uh, see you. Cheers. Take care.